Hi guys, it's the Book Geek and I'm back with another video and today I want to talk to you guys about the books I read this year that had the best storybook endings. So first up on the list is A Head Full of Ghosts. Um, this is a horror novel and I really love the way the author left the ending kind of like open-ended. He left it ambiguous. He left it open for interpretation. So during the story, we follow a family and their daughter, their 14 year old daughter, Marjorie, is experiencing some things that could be schizophrenia or could be demonic possession. Um, there's also a younger sister in the book named Mary. We call her Mary. And the story is told as she's being interviewed by this woman. I believe she has a blog and she's interviewing an adult Mary and Mary is recounting the things that happened in the past in their home. So um, because so many strange things was hap were happening in their home when they were children, this TV crew came in to document things. And we never really find out concrete answers. And that's what's so freaking scary because you don't know if um, Marjorie is actually possessed or not. You don't know if she's just having some type of psychotic break. And in the ending, you start to think that maybe Mary was responsible or whatever was possessing Marjorie has now entered into Mary. You don't know. And I think that's what's so freaking genius about this story. It, it leaves you wondering and leaves you trying to figure out the pieces, put the pieces back together. Um, he left it so open for interpretation. Now, in the ending, when Mary is wrapping up with her last interview with this woman who's, um, with this woman who's doing this blog, I believe, they're inside of like this cafe or coffee shop or something like that. And that whole scene is um, we get we get um, information in that whole scene about how the temperature in the room has changed. And if I'm not mistaken, because it's been a while since I've read that, they hinted at that in earlier chapters when strange things were happening in the home. And this is not Marjorie. And all of a sudden, the and Marjorie was the one who was being affected in the past. But this is Mary now. And now all of a sudden, the temperature in the room has changed. I mean, it got so cold to the point where she could see her own breath. And so you're left wondering, what the hell does that mean then? Does that mean that Mary was responsible when they was kids? Or does that mean that both of them had something going on? Does that mean that maybe Marjorie was really possessed and whatever was in her jumped out of her and got into Mary? We don't know. We don't know. And it is freaking genius. I love that. It was like watching them film when they leave the ending just open and you're wondering, what the fuck do I make of that? This book was so good. Another book that had a great story ending was Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This book kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. <sighs> there was a character in this story. I think he's going to make my most hated character. My least favorite character list for 2018. I hated him. I hated him so much. And it wasn't unlike A Head Full of Ghosts. This was a story wasn't about anything supernatural it was about something occurring with real people and those stories are always the scariest to me because those are things that really do happen in real life out in society now i'll do i do believe in supernatural things um but this is the thing that is more threatening to me um because you know i'm a person that believes in ghosts and stuff like that but for some reason people doing hateful things to other people is more scary to me than the supernatural things. And this one was no exception to that. Um, we have 
Jack and Grace. They seem like a lovely couple. And Jack seems like he's very charismatic and chivalrous. And really, he is a monster. And um, he keeps Grace under lock and key. Literally, she is not allowed to go anywhere alone. Jack goes everywhere with her. And only when they need to go out into public. If they don't need to go out into public, she is always in this house locked up. And um, he keeps her there and is trying to... He's waiting to get her sister also who has... Um, I, what is it that she has? Autism or Down Syndrome? I can't remember which one it is. I believe it's Down Syndrome. Uh, she's disabled nonetheless. Um, but her disabled sister is really his um, main target. And in order to lure the disabled sister in, he's married um, Grace and he's hoping that she, you know, the disabled sister will move in with them and then he really can take out his sadistic um, acts on the both of them. There's a point in the story where they have to, where Jack and Grace have to go out with some of um, Jack's associates and I believe these men bring their wives with them and they're, um, they try to build friendships with Grace but Jack does not allow her to have friends. He doesn't want her to be close to anyone. And there is this one woman in the story, though, who she questions everything. And even Grace thought that she, that if she was going to escape, her one hope would be Esther, the woman who questions everything. And so, you know, throughout the story, some things happen um, where she tries to, to hint um, certain things to Esther and we see Esther questioning Jack on certain things and just seeming unsure about things like she knew something was going on but then at other points in the story you thinking oh my god Esther like come on you know at one point in the story I was thinking come on Esther I thought you knew I thought you had a feeling something was wrong here and I started questioning Esther on it but then in the end you learn that Esther really did know that something was not right. Jack was preparing a room for Grace's um, disabled younger sister. And she had a favorite color. And she wanted her room to be that color. And at one point, he slipped up and made a mistake when he, they were around their friends and they were talking. And that's how Esther ended up finding out that, you know, Jack is a liar. And in the end, it just shocked me because... Esther is talking to Grace after the whole escape and she's telling her it's going to be okay and she's telling her exactly what happened. Esther is saying this to Grace. Now Grace is the one who did whatever because I'm going to let you read it and find out for yourself but she's telling her like you know don't worry Grace the police are going to go easy on you. Remember Jack did this and Jack did that. She's trying to help her. Um so that she will say the right thing to to the authorities so that they could have the same story. And, you know, you're wondering, why is Esther doing this? How did she, Why is she protecting Grace right now? Because Jack seemed like this person who was, you know, just the greatest man to have. Wouldn't she be questioning Grace right now? But she knew Jack was a liar. And she said, when they was discussing what happened, she looked steadily back at me. What color was Millie's room, Grace? Now, Millie is the younger disabled sister. Her favorite color was yellow, I believe. And I think Jack slipped up and said that the room was red. Whatever the case was supposed to be, because he was building her a torture um, room. But she looked steadily back at me. What color was Millie's room, Grace? I can barely get the word out. Red, I tell her, my voice breaking. Millie's room was red. That's what I thought, she says softly. And it ends like that. She is coming to Grace's defense. She had an inkling all along that something was not right in this relationship. It just, it blew me away. Because, you know, just when Grace thought that she didn't have anybody else in her corner, here comes this new friend that she's made that's going to help her 
not go to prison. <laughs> it's going to help her make it through this. It was really, really good. This book was a five-star read. I read this in no time. It was I couldn't put it down. At points when I was reading it, I had to just shut the book and throw it on the table because I couldn't believe the things that he were, he was doing to Grace. I couldn't believe this man was so evil. Really, really great book and love the ending, the way we have the friend coming to her aid and actually telling her, I know that something was not right and I believe you. I love that. This book, the plot twist in this book, blew me away. Loved it. Um, if you don't know what the story is about, it is about these three separate women that we follow. Um, each of them are the sole survivors of three separate um, mass murders. The sole survivors of these massacres. They call them final girls. And we have Quincy. She's our main character. She is the sole survivor of the Pine, Pine Cottage Massacre. And let's see, what's the other girl's name? I think Lisa and Samantha, I believe. Lisa is the sole survivor of um, a sorority um, house massacre. And then we have Sam. She's the sole survivor of the Night Light Inn massacre. So anyway... Um, Sam is in hiding and um, Lisa turns up dead. And then all of a sudden, Sam turns up on Quincy's, turns up at her apartment. She just shows up on her doorstep one day. And um, I was a little annoyed in the beginning of the story because I thought Quincy was very naive. Um, she ended up letting Sam into her home and let her stay with her. And then we end up discovering that Sam is not what she says she is that she has secrets and she has a secret agenda but in the end when everything unravels and everything comes together when all the pieces get put together you have this woman in the beginning of the story who's very naive and she never wanted to be Quincy I'm talking about we have Quincy in the beginning of the story she was naive she never wanted to be a final girl um and the story is written with the past and the present and it collides in the end. But during some of the past um, scenes, the chapters that are about the past, we see that Quincy is a little bit of a pushover as well. And so she's naive. She's a pushover. Um, and she never wanted to be a final girl. But then in the end, she ends up, you know, becoming this fighter, this sole survivor once again. And... Um, just different from the character that she started out as and in the end after the huge plot twist or whatever we have this woman who never wanted to be a final girl that's go going around helping these women who are the sole survivors of mass murders cope and helping them become final girls i thought that was very clever i thought that was incredible and um i thought that it was a great way to show the development of our character Quincy and how far she's come. I really, really love this book and I cannot wait to read um, Riley Sager's next um, book, The Last Time I Lied. I'm really looking forward to reading that one. Um, this was like reading a horror movie script. It reminded me of old school slasher films. It was incredible. Um, I suggest, if you have not picked this one up yet, to give it a try. It was really good. And lastly, here, for books that I read this year that had the best storybook endings, is Let the Right One In. <laughs> this book is always going to hold a special place in my heart. I love this book so much. It, uh, I can't even describe it. It's crazy when you love a book so much and then you can't even find the right words to talk about it. I have trouble explaining why I love this book so much um but the ending like okay so it's, it's a story it's a vampire story but it's so much more than that and um god what is her name um Eli I believe her name is um she makes friends with Oscar um next door the boy who lives next door and um, Eli is a vampire and Oscar is a troubled boy who's being bullied at school. I mean severely bullied. These bullies, I just wanted to, oh, 
I hate I hate bullies. These bullies were something else, okay? And when we when we meet Oscar, you know, we we follow him on we follow him throughout the story. Um, the beginning, he's getting tortured by these bullies. Then he ends up finding some strength and ends up um, confronting his bullies and fighting back against his bullies. And in the end, these bullies are back again. But this time, he has his vampire friend there to save the day. And that ending, as gruesome as it was, it was just, it was really emotional. Because, you know, there were some of the kids there, because there's always one main bully. Um, and some of the kids that were there backing up the main bully were not comfortable with the things that was happening to Oscar in that very last scene at the swimming pool. And um, it's unfortunate that they were there when Eli, or Ellie, however you want to pronounce it, I call, because, you know, we end up finding some things out about Eli, but I'm going to say Eli. It's unfortunate that they were there when she came to rescue Oscar because, I mean, she tore them to pieces. She, t she tore them to pieces, literally. And um, then we end up having Oscar and his Eli run away together. But we follow a lot of characters in this story, and um, which was different than the movie because I seen the movie years ago, loved it read the book and just recently watched the movie um again today earlier hate the movie now at least the american version i haven't seen the um swedish version yet i'm going to watch that but i hate the american version now they did not capture the emotion that this book captured we follow these characters we have an emotional attachment to these characters even the ones that are doing the wrong thing that are doing the the bad thing that are committing crimes that seem evil, we have an emotional connection to them because my stomach growled and I gotta hurry up and finish this. Because of the way that John wrote these characters, he makes you fall in love with them and makes you hate them at the same time. It's not all black and white. It's so such a great area. And in the movie, they just did not capture that. Uh, I have no emotional connection to any of those characters in the movie. Like, in the movie, you see her fall down in the American movie, you see her fall down from the tree. She lands on Virginia. She bites Virginia's neck. We have no emotional connection to Virginia in the story at all. Because we just see her in that one scene. But in the book, we follow Virginia. We follow Lack. We follow Jock. We follow Tommy. And we see the things that they're struggling with in their day-to-day -day life. And then we see them struggling with things that... Is all connected to Eli and Oscar. And it's just phenomenal writing. And the movie did not do it justice. Um, yeah. That ending when they said. When they're trying to figure out what happened at the swimming pool. And the kids are describing how it was an angel that came down and saved the day. This book. Oh, I love this book so much. You have no idea how much I love this story. I gotta wrap this up because my stomach's talking. You probably can hear it in the video. I need to go eat lunch. But five star read one of the best books i've ever read in any genre one of the best books i've read this year i guess this book was phenomenal it, it really was i love this book i love it so much and if you have not read the story please go read it i some people are afraid to read horror books it is so much more than a horror book it is so much more than just your typical vampire story it has heart it has emotion if you read this and don't come out feeling for a lot of these characters, I don't know what to tell you. The writing was spectacular. It was superb. And that ending was phenomenal. Man, she was ripping, ripping heads. <laughs> ripping heads off. It was great. It was great. It was so great. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, God. Read this book. Read this book. I'm going to be doing a video soon about all my five-star reads. You best believe this book is going to be on the top of the list for this year. Anyway, guys, do not forget to like and subscribe. Um, subscribe. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Um, leave me any comments down below, book recommendations. Um, tell your friends about me. Um, 
let me know some books that you read that had really great endings this year i would love to um to know about it and as always all my information will be linked down below in the description box i will talk to you guys again soon bye